Hi, I'm Andy from Steinberg and I'm happy to be here at DV247 today to talk about seven of the new features that are included in Cubase 7. So on this website, uh, you'll find seven feature videos uh, that offer you some, some insights and also some tips and tricks into things like the new Mix console, the customizable new console that's in, inside of Cubase, uh, the new channel strip, the new plugins that are always included in new releases, um, things like the new chord track and chord and analyzer, the harmonizer, which allows us to harmonize audio and MIDI files, and a basic general overview of all the new exciting features that we've included in the box. So check them out. I hope you enjoy them. We've spoken at length about the chord track and all the additions that adds in terms of being able to find chords or progressions to move to. But, but let's say you're stuck or you, you, you're finding it hard to actually create a harmonic content for your track. So let me explain from the outset what the harmonizer does. It takes a MIDI file or it takes any monophonic audio file. So that could be a guitar solo, a violin note, a bass note. Not that you necessarily want to create you know, content from a bass guitar, but just giving you the idea idea that it's anything that's monophonic and it actually allows us to mold anything that's monophonic content or a MIDI file to the harmonic content in our track. So I showed you chord track before. What I'm going to show you now is creating chords in chord track from a MIDI file that we've already got. So I've got this song which is fairly, I guess, the genre is sort of more synthetic vocal so it's more a dance R&B sort of vibe so you can hear I've gone through my vocals and I've actually gone through and straightened the pitch out and quantized the pitch. So that's you know, very in fashion at the moment, moving vocals around and using them in, in more of a synthetic uh, type of setting. So we want to create harmonies out of this one vocal that we've got there. So what I'm going to do is open up the whirly part here. So I can open it up in the key editor or I can simply highlight it and then basically I go chord track, we say make chords. So we've got a few options. I would include the bass notes because I want to see the, the, the root notes, but then we've also got tension, so we could say that's suspensions and that sort of thing. If we go up to the top now in chord track, this is pretty phenomenal because it's actually mapped out the chords of my whole entire project. Yep, so now that I've mapped the chords out of my whole entire project, just by using the track that's got the most MIDI information, I can now go and start creating harmonies from anything that I've got sitting there. I'm going to go to my vocal track now, which is sitting here, and what I want to do is actually create more texture, so more harmonic content. So basically, I'm creating harmonies very quickly from the chord track. So I'm going to select it, just simply going to go to Audio, Generate Harmony Voices. Now I've got a few options. So the number of voices, I might just want two. It's always a good idea to re reduce vibrato strength because let's say harmonies don't always exactly reproduce the, um, the portamento or the vibrato of the lead singer. So as you reduce that, you're actually setting your vocals apart and giving them a more natural sound. So we're going to say open in sample editor after completion. So watch what happens when I hit OK. All of a sudden now, I've got three vocals instead of the one vocal that I had before appearing in the uh, sample editor. So I can actually click on individual vocals and it's going to instantly mix in between those three vocals. So in effect, it's actually turning very audio into a polyphonic editor. So we can actually see our main track there, or wherever the main track is, here it is, and the vocals as they sit around the main track there. The other thing we can do is start messing around a little bit with parameters. So if I go to my soprano track here, if I click on chord track, I can say single voice or autos or voicing, so I can, can change the, the, the actual parameters or the algorithm, I guess, of how it's actually generating these, these um, harmony voices in real time. I can also change in between, you know, bass, tenor, alto, soprano, but you can see we've got two of each. So we might want two tenors or two alto tracks, uh, depending on the, I guess, the genre or the, the, the sex of the um, person you're actually recording. Then, of course, we can change the voicings. So I showed you that in chord track, but we can maybe change from guitar voicings to piano to basic. Um, the other thing we can do is set, the more tracks we have, we can set them as slave to the main track. So if we don't want to you know, edit it on each individual track, we just set slave, and that will, whatever we do to the soprano track, will now also affect the alto track. So you've got loads of options in terms of parameters, but how does it actually sound? Let's check it out and have a listen. So this is the verse.
and move through the track a bit. And don't forget, I've actually got my parameters set here to quite a synthetic setting. So it doesn't necessarily need to be, you know, that top 10 sort of, uh, I guess, cutting edge genre at the moment. If you're recording in an organic environment, then you can have as much of it or as little of it as you actually want. What I've done today is embellished it so that you get the whole idea and the whole spectrum of it. So in a nutshell, this is the harmonizer, but it's, it's great for creating harmonic content for your tracks, but also allowing you to come up with harmonies and opportunities vocally, or I guess, you know, with any monophonic instrument that you may not have access to yourself at any one point in time.